And in here, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Great Eight Phantoms exhibition. On display here are seven of the most famous phantoms in the world, each one representing its generation and each one owned by a very special person. And this magnificent Rolls Royce has to be the jewel in the crown. Her Majesty the Queen has graciously consented to allow this magnificent Phantom VI to be part of the exhibition. Her Majesty was presented with this vehicle by the British Motor Industry to mark her Silver Jubilee in 1977 and it has been in almost daily use since then, perhaps most famously to transport the Duchess of Cambridge to Westminster Abbey for her wedding to Prince William. Another royal phantom is this beautiful Phantom IV, which was once owned by the third Aga Khan, Sir Sultan Mohammed Shah, one of only 18 Phantom IVs ever made, all of them for royalty or heads of state. And interestingly, he personalised this phantom with a very early version of a personal dictaphone. But let's go back to the earliest phantom, the Phantom I. We have a hat, we have a cane. It could only belong to Fred Astaire. And I'm joined by Liz Ferrin from the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, which now owns this Phantom I. So tell me, how did Fred Astaire come by this beautiful car? So after a very successful career on Broadway, Fred made his way to London for the opening of Funny Face on the West End. And after it was decided that that would be renewed into the following summer, he placed an order for a Rolls-Royce Phantom I. This car is actually a Sedenka de Ville, so it's a single cabriolet, which means that the front portion of the car, the upholstery is a hard tack leather, and the interior car, which is much more opulent and where the passengers would sit, is a beautiful silk brocade. And it's just the most wonderful and sort of a evocative vehicle, isn't it? It just says Fred Astaire all over. It, it certainly does. Well, Liz, thank you so much for telling us about it. You're very welcome. Now just over here, and in keeping with the entertainment theme, is probably the most recognisable phantom in the world, John Lennon's Phantom V. Now this incredible car was regularly seen driving around the streets of this very part of London, ferrying John Lennon and the Beatles to the nearby Apple Corps headquarters. Well, now it lives in the Royal British Columbia Museum in Canada, and curator Dr Lorne Hammond has joined us here, flown over with the car, for the exhibition and my goodness what stories you must be able to tell about it but tell us first of all about this wonderful paint job because it wasn't always like this was it? It was originally Valentine Black. Uh, it was ordered and delivered in the spring of 1965 and in the fall it took the Beatles to Buckingham Palace to receive their MBEs. So when did he decide to create this amazing piece of art? They were mixing down Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band and uh, he commissioned Steve Weaver at J.P. Fallon to make the design and uh, it was approved and he sat in the garage uh, with cans of house paint and put the design on the vehicle and it was delivered nine days before the press conference for Sgt Peppers. There's so much more I know you could tell us but there's an awful lot more to see here at the exhibition because of course the Phantom is not the preserve of heads of state and film stars and musical mega stars. It's also been the mainstay of heroes and adventurers, seeing them through triumph and adversity. This beautiful, unusual Phantom III was owned by Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, who was the Commander-in-Chief of all the ground forces at the D-Day landings in 1944. Now, it's known as the Butler Phantom, after Alan Samuel Butler, who was the chairman of the Haviland Aircraft Company, who installed the unusual forward-sloping windscreen, which was to make the car more aerodynamic. And also, although it has been painstakingly restored, you can still see a scorch mark on the dashboard from Winston Churchill's cigar. Another great British adventurer was Sir Malcolm Campbell, who broke four water speed and nine land speed records in the 1920s and 30s. He was the first man to ever drive a car at more than 300 miles per hour. Well, this beautiful Phantom II was for everyday driving, I should make clear, but I'm delighted to tell us more about it and about his relationship with Rolls-Royce. This is Malcolm's grandson, Don Wales. Don, thank you so much. He really did love Rolls-Royce, didn't he? He did. Grandfather was a big fan of Rolls-Royces. I mean, this is just one of many that he had. It's a lovely blue, shiny example of it. But not only that, I mean, he used the Rolls-Royce R-Type engine to power his 301 car that you just mentioned, but also his boat, Bluebird K3. So it's the only engine to have held the water speed, the land speed and the air speed record at the same time. Well done, it's wonderful to talk to you and to find out a bit more about the Campbell-Rolls-Royce connection. Thank My you. My pleasure, thank you. 
It's almost time for Torsten to reveal the new Rolls-Royce Phantom, but before then, I have one more great Phantom to show you. At one minute past midnight on the 1st of January 2003 at Rolls-Royce's brand new headquarters in Goodwood in West Sussex, this Phantom 7 was launched and marked the renaissance of Rolls-Royce in the 21st century. And since then, for the last 14 years, Phantom 7s have been flying the flag for Rolls-Royce and they have become the most popular and successful Phantoms ever. Truly beautiful, highly bespoke Phantom 7s have been commissioned by customers all over the world using precious gemstones and painted silk and exquisite marquetry. Genuinely, they have been works of art. Mm -hmm.